Who the heck are you? Well, no, of course I'm not Santa, but I am a dad. And I have bought a lot of gifts over the years that were all about trying to inspire somebody to learn how to code. And I could tell you that it's not easy. And every year that it goes by, it gets harder and harder, which is why I put together a special gift idea book that you could download for free. Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Prep from GiveMeCoding.com and it's that time of the year where you're probably preparing for the holidays. Now, if you're in my house, it's the Christmas holiday. But if it's in your house, you might be celebrating something else. So now, you're probably also involved in some kind of gift exchange and you're probably gonna be giving gifts to maybe a young person or maybe not so young of a person in your house. So I'm gonna share with you a story that might be able to help you out this holiday season. Over the years, I have been asked many times what are our good coding toy ideas? So you might not want your child to become a programmer, but maybe you do. But in either case, I think we all want our kids to become better thinkers. So there are five things that I definitely recommend that you consider when you're going to purchase some kind of toy that teaches a young person how to code. Number one, the first thing I think you do have to factor in, of course, is your own budget. And that is the price of the toy. You could spend easily, easily spend over $1,000 on a computer and put software on it and then put it in front of a young person and expect them to begin exploring how to code. But you could also get a $40 gadget that's just as much fun. And I think it kind of goes back to the old story about when we were growing up, we would get these great gifts around the holiday time and then we take the gift out of the box, play with the toy for a while, and then we would look at the box and go, oh my, that could be something else and then we will play with it. So my point is, you could spend a lot of money, but don't also look at a gift idea that's priced lower as not being a good choice, because you might be surprised. The next item that I would tell you to consider is imagination quality. So is it something that's gonna really spark their curiosity? Is it gonna ignite their imagination? And that is a little bit harder to see, but I think what you could do is if you're looking at a particular gadget, a toy, a device, a robot, look at its capabilities. Does it only allow for something to go forward and backwards? Can it go left and right? Can it spin? Can it make noise? Can it light up? And look to see how those factors all come into play in making the toy a little bit more engaging so it sparks their curiosity. A lot of times on the surface, you look at the price, you look at the device, it looks really good, but it doesn't offer a broader range of functionality. So I would definitely take a look at what is it capable of doing? The third item I would tell you to look at is does it come with an app? It seems to be most coding toys today are coming with some kind of app that you could download and install on your smartphone or your tablet or even access via a website that will then allow your son or daughter or your young person to begin exploring how to code. But look for that app. But more importantly, as you're looking at that, see if there is some kind of community that allows your young person to share whatever they built with the larger community and then get feedback. Now, most of the time, the manufacturers that are out there are, are creating communities that are controlled, they are safe, but as a parent or a guardian, you might wanna look into it and see what can it do. Getting that kind of feedback in a community can be a very, very helpful first step in learning how to take their idea and make it into something else, or even get some feedback on how to get some help to make it do what they're trying to make it do. It's a very, very common practice in software developer circles to reach into those kind of communities. And having a young person begin to explore that early in a safe way could be a really, really positive experience. The next item is, is it a contemporary item? So there are so many cool coding toys out this year that are related to movies like Star Wars or Frozen or Frozen 2. And those topics are exciting to your young person. So why not take the topic and marry it with a very, very cool concept like learning how to code and bring the two of them together. It's like the old commercial where you took chocolate and peanut butter, put them in two, two great tastes that taste great together as one. So it's that same idea. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't make the concept so boring and bland that a kid isn't interested in it. Why not tie it to it? So we're seeing the major toy manufacturers do that a lot. Explore those, find out what they're interested in, what really sparks their curiosity, and then take advantage of that. So the last one is probably the most important out of all of these. And that's something I believe in as a professor, as a teacher, as someone who's taught a lot of coding camps, and that's to have fun. The device should be a fun thing to use. 
a lot of times in my house we would buy different gifts for our kids and they would look at them for a little while then they would go up into the, the closet and there they would sit. I look at a device like this, this is the Sphero Spark and this is one of the best coding toys that are out there. Many schools are using it and it's a lot of fun. And that's the key, it's fun. Now even if they get it and they do shelve it for a little while, let it alone. Sometimes on those rainy days, a few weeks or even a few months from now, they're going to go back, they're going to look through what they have and they're going to begin to explore it again. But making sure it's fun is okay at any age really, but it's ultimately something that a kid is going to decide. You may not have any control over that, but give it a shot, put it in front of them and see what happens. All right, so thanks for watching these tips, but more importantly, if you go down into the comments, you're gonna see that there's a download link where you could download the idea book that I put together, which gives a whole bunch of coding toy ideas ranging from age 36 months up to 14 and even beyond. So take a look at those. Those are ones I handpicked and I feel that are really, really good entry points for learning how to code. And for the ones at the older end of the spectrum where I list a couple of devices, they go on forever and I see them being used by many different professionals, older kids, and even younger kids who are very, very adventurous and really interested in learning how to code. So if you have any questions after you look at those, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Email me anytime, fred at getmecoding.com, and if I can help you out, I definitely will. Have a great day, everybody. Make sure you share this video out and like this post, and also make sure you visit getmecoding.com to learn more about starting to code. See ya.